Good morning, YouTube. Duty Ron checking in quickly here with another video. I, uh, I'm starting a little bit early instead of the 9.15. I'm starting a little early because I am driving to, um, I'm going to be driving to work. So um, I wanted to start just a tad bit early so I can see the comments quickly. Um, and anybody who's here for the initial part of this stream, if you stay for the first you know, it's I'm only going to be about 15 minutes or 10 minutes on this. Um, but if you stay on the stream and anybody comes in and let, just let them know I'm not going to be answering comments on stream as I'm, uh, as I'm driving. It's, you know, it's just dangerous to look at the screen. So um, I'm going to say hello to everyone who's coming on in here. Uh, Scarlett, author, writer, thank you so much for coming in. I uh, appreciate you being in here, first-time viewer. If you're a first-time viewer, let me know. Um... Let me know if you're, you know, if you're watching for a first time. Hi, Gail. Good to see you. Um, I'm going to get to that in a second. Carla, thank you so much for being in here. Jay Dubs, good morning. American Patriot, appreciate that. Trust me, I don't do this much, but I'm going to do it just to talk. Um, part of my routine in the morning, and this was, this has been going on for a long time. Hi, Long Island girl. Good morning. So part of my morning routine is just by chance, um, my route that I drive to my office, I go by Justina, uh, her home in, in Valley Stream. I drive past it every morning. Good morning, uh, retired Irish detective. Thank you so much for being in here. My fellow brother from the NYPD and housing in the building down from Florida, sunny Florida. It's 42 degrees and cold. Good morning, Lonnie. So again, um, share it out onto your social media. I'm here to talk to you about um, the babysitter, uh, the nanny, as they call it, of t little baby Thomas Valva. Uh, Amanda Wildman is going to be on, is going to be on, wow, Gail, uh, is going to be on Dr. Oz at 1 p.m. Fox, New, uh, Fox 5, it's a Fox station. I'm going to DVR it. I'm going to DVR it and record the, um, I think it's going to, you know, there's going to be a bunch of segments in there, uh, but I'm going to record it and then I'll review it when I get home and watch it. And if it's anything that we should speak about, I'll, um, I'll, I'll talk about it and perhaps play the video on one of my videos. Uh, I'll play the audio, not the video. Um, one second, J dubs, just let me just stay in thought here before I start driving off and then I'll, I'll answer your question. Um, I, I feel Gemma's journey. Good to see you. Gemma's journey and grace good friend of mine. Everybody should go and subscribe to her channel. She went live yesterday and I was in there. I had the honor to be inside her live stream. So it was great to see you and I'm glad I could be um, in your broadcast. So um, again, you know, my feeling is that, you know, this is a bit premature and I don't think that this nanny uh, should be on a talk show circuit when I really feel strongly that the defense, the district attorney, the, the, the not the defense, the uh, prosecution and the defense will be cross-examining her. She will be called up in a trial. And this is what makes it difficult when people do things like this. When you have, uh, Vicky, good morning. When you have uh, a potential witness, which she is a witness um, to, um, to prove, you know, this uh, abuse that has been going on in the past, and, you know, K Noodles, I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much. Um, to prove abuse in the past, you need to build a case. And she, if she saw uh, Angela, as she puts it, as the ringleader and Michael following suit, uh, like she was portraying Angela as the person of that would institute the this corporal punishment, as they call it. You know, sit on the couch. I don't care if you have to go to the bathroom. You could sit, you'll sit there until I tell you, and he would just follow her. And this is her words. This is what she was saying. I watched a, a minute long clip that um, this nanny went on to say that I feel that she, uh, the nanny felt that the, 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 the fiance, Angela Polino, was the person behind, you know, and, and this is just her speaking, but, you know, they are both. I, I agree, crazy, anim, uh, crazy life. They're both animals. But you know what? If this nanny has that information, why go on a talk show circuit? Why go on Dr. Oz? What's it going to be next, Dr. Phil? You know, it makes it really hard 
Thank you, Nell. I appreciate it. Nelly Bell, thank you so much. I feel that it's going to make it difficult um, for her to get in, for them to get a jury of her of the peers to come on there and say, hey, no, I, I never heard anything about this case when you now have it on a nationally syndicated talk show circuit. So I think that she could have done these interviews after the case is over or after the fact. But I don't see any any value other than Dr. Oz trying to sell views and get ratings behind this tragedy. tragedy. And I, I feel strongly from a law enforcement standpoint that they shouldn't be speaking about it. You know, you're talking about a show that reaches millions and millions of people. And, um, you know, I, I feel that the, the, she should have respectfully declined, uh, you know, whatever money she's being paid to show up on that show. And I guarantee you, she's not just coming on that show just just out of the goodness of her heart. You know, they paid her to come there. They probably picked her up in a limousine and, you know, um, picked her up and, you know. So, Joey Brooklyn, good morning and happy birthday. Guys, everybody in the chat, please wish Joey Brooklyn a very happy birthday. Uh, wish Joey Brooklyn a happy 29th birthday. Joey Brooklyn is a good friend of all of ours and a great American patriot, a great New Yorker, a fellow Brooklynite. So, Joey Brooklyn, happy birthday, brother. I am going to get ready at 9.15 to start driving off. Um, they can't because she's already taped the show. The show is already taped and it's going to air at 1 p.m. Eastern today. So um, the show is going to air. It's already been taped. Um, and, and it's unfortunate that they're doing that, man. So uh, let me just let me just share this on a community post. Uh, I am live. Okay, I just I just sent it out on a on a public um, on a community post. So again, you know, Amanda Wild, uh, Wildman was the nanny of Thomas Valva from 2017 to 2018, according to the Dr. Oz show and according to her interview with him. Um, and you know what, guys, she should have waited. She should have held back and not gone on that show because. The prosecution is going to have to question her. And during a trial, you can bet your bottom dollar that she's going to be called to that witness stand. There's no question in my mind that she's definitely going to be questioned. She's going to be called in and questioned. So, um, J Dubs uh, Vlogs, what was the question? Because I'm going to start. I'm going to start rolling in a few, and I'm not going to be able to answer the questions. And I I will be riding right past Justina's house as I do each morning. Um, and I want to just say this, on my live last night, just a disclaimer on my live, I said that she has full custody of the kids. She legally does not have full custody of the kids. She still has to go through the process. It's like a, a process. It's almost, it's, it's almost just like going through the motions. You know and I know that the family court and uh, Suffolk and Nassau are, are not going to deny her custody of her surviving two children. She's a loving mother. She's a good mother. And they're going to give her the custody. She has the kids since this, uh, since these two were taken into custody, I think, January 24th. So I know it's temporary, but that's just, uh, obviously, those are just words. Those kids are with her 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And no court is going to say, hey, you can't have custody of these kids. We're going to take them away from you. After all that they have failed her in the past... After all, they have failed her. Welcome in from Cape Town, South Africa. Hello, Mr. Mr. or Mrs. Nolan. Thank you so much for being in on the broadcast. So I don't feel, and I, as a law enforcement professional, I have to say, no court system after all of the, all of the wrong they did in this poor little kid's, in this poor little child's life, they're not going to now take his siblings and take them away from their biological mother. There's no way that that is going to happen. And I, I would bet my pension on it. So um, I did I did say that she, um, you know, it was a, there was a hearing. Some people were saying it wasn't about custody, but whatever the case may be, she was in family court. And um, these are all these are all legal mumbo jumbo that they have to go through to grant full custody. Now, I think that the court should expedite expeditiously give full custody uncontested without any 
CPS showing up to check on her. I, I heard rumors and saw comments that CPS came numerous times to her house. They're not going to find anything wrong because she's a loving mom. She's a loving, um, caring mother who wants justice for her child who was wronged by the system. She was wronged by the system. So that very system right now has to redeem themselves and they know they fucked up. They know that they fucked up in a, in a, in a colossal way. And, you know, it's just a matter of time before she's legally granted full custody of her biological children. And, you know, like I said, all of, you know, all of the signs uh, will point towards her getting the full, full custody. She's a wonderful mom and she goes above and beyond the call of duty to fight the system the best way that she knows how. You know, she stood up to these judges and all of these um, family court uh, advocates and all these people, and she screamed at the top of the, at the top of a mountain that my kids are gonna my kids are gonna die, and sure enough, one of them did. Thank God, the other two survived. And you know, at the end of the day, folks, she um, deserves custody, and she deserves not to have to fight for the custody. And I feel that they will give it to her, but they're gonna go through the process. They're gonna go through. The, um, they're going to dot their I's and cross their T's and do everything legally so there can be no further lawsuits against them. So um, they've already been there, uh, Dennis. They've already been there numerous times. So, um, yeah, I love that she calls them out by name, and I love that she continually does that. And they cringe every time she's on a news circuit doing that. Trust me, they cringe every time she does that. All right, guys, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the drive, so I'm not going to be able to read the comments. But I did want to say this. You know, as a New York City retired police detective and as a police officer for the city of New York, I have to tell you that there were so many times that I've saved children from abusive parents. And I told you guys the story about the young boy, seven years old, who had burn marks all over his body from cigarette burns. His mother, uh, I got a call when I was on patrol, me and my partner, a female partner, we went to a house, an apartment in the projects and the housing projects. It was for a child screaming, a child calling for help. And we got there and I, I won't go into the whole story, but it was a mother who was abusing the child because he got bad reports on his report card, bad comments from the teachers that he was uh, disruptive in class. And she thought it was right for every time uh, he got out of line for her cigarette burn him. And when we got there, the kid was covered in blankets at one o'clock in the morning on a couch in the living room and the mother was drinking a 40 ounce. And I was with um, um, I was with a female partner, and 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 I'll never forget the look on the kid's face. He was so so scared. You could see his eyes were wide open, and he was, it was one o'clock in the morning. It was a school night, and I, I I all all of the markers, all of the alerts went off in my head that something was very wrong. And I separated the mom from the kid. I took the my female partner took the mom, and I stayed with the boy. I got down on one knee, and I said, "Hey, buddy, what's going on?" And the kid wouldn't answer me. And I said, it's okay. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. Little buddy, I'm, I'll, I'll help you. You just tell me what's happening. And he said, please take me away. Please save me. Please help me. He kept saying it. And I said, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I r slowly removed the covers and there was burn marks all over his legs, all over. He was wearing a shirt and underwear, so I couldn't see anywhere else, but there was marks, burn marks all over his body. And she was burning him with a cigarette. Some of them were old and some of them were new, and we wound up arresting her. But if the neighbor hadn't called, if the neighbor, if, if neighbors didn't call, that would have went on because she certainly wasn't going to call. And her, the grandmother was there who was 80 years old, and we had to arrest her too. Dennis, we took them into the PSA. I was with Mitzi Palmer. Uh, you know her uh, on the midnights. Uh, B-Dog took the night off. My partner, Brett, took the night off, and Mitzi Palmer was my partner. That was one of the few times I put my hands on a woman in my life. And um, I, she said that, the, you know, when we put her in handcuffs, she said that the kid deserved it. And the crazy part was, is that her sister was a New York City police officer. And her sister didn't know any of this was going on either. But she had the gall to come to the precinct and complain to me that why is her grandmother, 80 years old, in a cell? And I said, well, she, <clears throat> she failed to call 911. She failed to call 911 and she's being, uh, she's, she got arrested for endangering the welfare of a child. Okay, guys, I'm pulling off. So that's just a story I wanted to share with you guys because I feel that 
you know, the New York City and all police officers are getting a bad rap. Yes, Michael was a New York City transit police officer and he's a piece of shit. He's a low life scumbag. He's every worst name you could call in the book. I'm driving now, so I'm not gonna look at the comments. But Michael Valva is the scum of the earth, is the worst of the worst. He is vile, a piece of garbage. And he was a New York City police officer, and that makes it a hundred times worse. But the good men and women who go out there and protect lives every day, I salute them. I continue to salute them. I'll always salute them. And I know what it's like to walk in the shoes of a police officer when you're constantly being judged and every move you make, somebody has something to say about it. Uh, at the end of the day, folks, we're just human beings and we're trying to do the best that we can. So when you go into chat groups or um, Facebook groups or any groups or Twitter or any social media and you want to jump on that bandwagon and bash police officers, they may, they may be the very person between life and death for you sometime in the future. So always remember that these, these police officers Sorry about that, guys. The, the, the phone fell from the mount. But these, are, these police officers are the very people who can, can be the difference between life and death for you. So, uh, again, you know, um, it, I, I see so much, I see so many people jumping on that bandwagon and just bashing, bashing the police. And um, it's, not, it's not a good thing for us to get into. We need to try to make... You know, we need to try to make a difference. We need to make a difference out there. Good morning, Dari D. Great to see you, my dear. Thank you for joining. So, um, again, I was at a red light, so I was able to look at the comments for a second. But um, these glasses are just for reading, so I had to take them off. I can't drive with those glasses on. Um, they're only just for uh, up-close reading. So I'm going past um, Justina's house right in about 30 seconds, I'll be passing by. And what I love about what's going on at her location is that a lot of people and a lot of her family or friends, people who are concerned citizens that want to help, ladies, gentlemen, they all put blue ribbons on the trees that line her block and um, blue ribbons out in front of the house. So every time in the morning when I go by there, I get a good feeling of, you know, um, solidarity of people trying to help her. And I know she's gotten an overwhelming amount of... All right, I got I have to end this. Because <laughs> uh, the phone keeps falling off. Uh, it keeps falling off the mount. So, you know, she's getting an overwhelming amount of, of support. Blue ribbons. I'm, by, I'm riding by there right now. You can see them on the trees behind me. Blue ribbons on the street, on the trees. And I think it's a beautiful thing. And I love that you guys, whoever is, has done that, kudos to you kudos to the people who put those blue ribbons on the trees and all around her uh house where she lives uh, it's a it's a really nice gesture you guys are you, you guys whoever's doing that are wonderful um and then i saw a bunch of stuff about the sanitation uh the sanitation department had some something that they brought over to her so it's really a nice a nice thing that it's being done for her um I'm sorry that I'm having technical difficulties. <clears throat> but anyways, I want to say also happy birthday to Joey Brooklyn. He is um, on vacation with his beautiful wife. They are uh, having a little getaway for his birthday celebration. So happy birthday to Joey Brooklyn. He's celebrating his 29th birthday. So that's always nice. I'm going to pull over over here so I can end it properly and say hello and goodbye to everybody. So I'm going to pull over. There's a nice little park right over here. And I'm going to pull over. It's, it's a quiet spot. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> put my glasses back on and properly say goodbye to everybody. But again, I wanted to set the record straight for, um, you know, my live last night. I, you know, I said she had full custody of kids. And you know what? In my eyes, she has custody of kids. They're there and it's just a formality. So I wanted to set the record straight. Hi, Amanda's blind, chronic blind Thank you so much, um, and illness. Thank you, illness life. Thank you so much for being in here. So, J Dubs, if you have that question, go with it because I don't want to not answer the question. Um, the magnet, the magnet on my 
my phone is bad. So um, go with the question so I can answer it quickly and I got to get back going on the road. But one o'clock, Fox 5, Fox affiliate, anywhere where you get Dr. Oz, there's going to be the nanny for, for uh, Thomas Valva on the... Um, um, there's going to be the nanny on Dr. Oz. He's going to interview her. I don't know what it's going to be. I was put out of court for my daughter because I had a face mask. At, because I had a face mask. Send me an email with that. I don't want to get into it here on the live. J-Dub, send me an email. Uh, go on to my website, dutyron.com, and then you'll, you'll be able to email me from there. Uh, I don't want to talk, talk about that here on this live. But thank you for sending that question in to me. Any questions like that? Uh, it, that's a private thing. Send me a message. I don't want to talk publicly about that. Um, again, it's for your safety and mine. Uh, I won't get into that, you know, for legal reasons on, on a live stream. So um, if, if you have any, uh, you know, law enforcement or law questions, send them to me by email. Um, it's 1 p.m. my time, Eastern time. I already set my DVR to record it. And um, I... I'm going to record it and I'm going to review it and we'll listen to the audio of it tonight if it's noteworthy, if it's anything to listen to. But I'm against it. I think that she should not be doing that. I don't think it's good for the case and things of that nature. So um, much love and respect from my house to yours. I'm going to continue on. Go to my website, dutyron.com, Nellie Bell, dutyron.com. Um, and then you'll get it all there. Um, I don't think it's a great idea, you know, from a law enforcement standpoint, you know, they're going to, they're going to need her to testify against these two victims, the, these two animals for the victims. He's going to, they're going to need to have her testify for the children. You know, there's, don't forget there's charges against them for his other brother. There's child neglect charges against the surviving brother, Thomas's surviving sibling. There's a, there's charges against them for him so you know we we have to keep that in mind that she is going to have to ish she is going to have to make statements for the surviving child who went through this ordeal and was able to come out alive you know so um i think this is this is not a good idea and i don't think you know dr oz should have thought better and said hey you know but this is all about um views and 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 ratings and they don't care about the victims or the family they just want to put a show out there so that's tar it's terrible so shame on you dr oz in my eyes you know you should have this should have waited exactly mac exactly <clears throat> all right guys behind me is a really nice pond i might do a broadcast from here one day it's beautiful so i'm gonna go i got the sun in my eyes I'm all messed up here. My phone keeps dropping. This was one of my worst um, technical broadcasts that I've ever done. Uh, but thank you all for being in here. Happy birthday to Joey Brooklyn. Uh, much love and respect from my house to yours. I got the thin blue line jacket on and I'm on my way into the office. Hi, Pat. Thank you to my channel members, my Patreons, all of my moderators, all of the great people who leave comments. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all one word, duty Ron. Much love and respect from my house to yours. As always, I have respect for the victims. I have respect for Justina and respect for anybody who is a crime victim. As you all know, <clears throat> if you've been following me for a long time or subscribed to my channel, I always, always do things with the utmost of respect. And that's what I'm about. I'm not about trying to stir up the pot or, you know, you know, put out misinformation. And if I do make a mistake, I'm always the first to admit it. Part of being a, a, a good human being is when you make a mistake is admit to it. So I might have, I might have made a couple of, you know, errors in my reporting yesterday, but she has the kids and she will mark my words, my pension. I could bet my pension on it. She will have full custody of those two children, her biological children and rightfully so. So, um, Good things to everybody. Love and respect. Have a great hump day. It's Wednesday, and I will talk to you on the next live. Paul Peck Drywall, go follow. <clears throat> go follow Paul Peck. I got to get a cup of coffee. I'll talk to you guys all soon. Have a good day. Thank you. Share the broadcast. Don't forget to share this. Share it on your public post. Let everybody go and watch this, um, um, this Dr. Oz, and then we'll talk about it later on. Thank you.